Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me in sunny Spain, where as most of you know I am for the winter. At the moment I'm in Margalef. I've been here for all of January. I've um, got like another week left before I head up to Santa Linha, but it's been absolutely stunning here. I don't think we've had a single cloudy day and it's nearly the end of January. It's absolutely crazy. I'm at a crag called Espadeus. I'm sure I'll flash up some footage and stuff as I'm, as I'm talking. Espadeus is amazing. It's this big long crag. It kind of reminds me of Stanage, but steeper, more pockety, warmer for the most part, and covered in bolts as well. So no track climbing to be done here. Amazing spot though. So many good routes. Um, sixes upwards, but probably in the sevens, eights is kind of, it's kind of where most of the stuff is loads of pocket pulling and stuff. I feel like Margalef for me is somewhere, there's not much hiding from the routes, uh, if you know what I mean. It's, I find it hard to cheat my way up a route, by which I don't mean actual cheating, but it's hard. It's not very, it always feels like it's 2D, so there's loads of pockets, so it's hard to get loads of drop knees and stuff on the kind of routes I've been on uh, and sort of conserve energy. It feels like the kind of place where you've just got to sort of pull, 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 and obviously there are rests to be had. Um, but yeah, it feels like there's no hiding to be had on these routes. I love it. I'm not very good at it, but I love it. I'm currently working a route called Transylvania, which is 8A. It's a proper three-star classic of the area. It's really good. It's just under 30 metres. It overhangs a lot more than you think. Again, I'll, hopefully I'll have some footage to flash up. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's properly steep. The, the video is going to be about how to make your sport climbing life easier sort of logistically if you like so just top tips on how to make your life easier with giving you more chance of success because that's what we want to do we want to tick the routes don't we so yeah some on sighting kind of stuff maybe more of a red pointing slant perhaps to it all there's lots of things in climbing that I'm not very good at there's a few things I am quite good at and one of them is making my life easy on routes right from the, the you know the first goes on it through to working it through to hopefully ticking it in the end I've got to say thank you to everyone on Instagram and Facebook. So check out our pages there because I put a post up for other people's top tips as well. So hopefully a few of them will make it on. I cannot put every top tip for making your sport climbing life easy, but I'll give you a few and put in the comments below if you've got some good ones as well because, you know, other people will read the comments. So anything you can share, it's all good. It was kind of prompted by this route particularly because I kind of, the first time I got on it, I did some moves, but I just take the clip stick with me. If it's going to be hard for me, an 8A, whilst not my full limit, it's very close to, um, I just take the clip stick with me. So on this one, you know, I, where I could climb and clip, I did. But if anything was remotely like tricky or that, I want to save energy. A big part of this whole process is saving energy. So I take the clip stick, so when I fall off, I don't have to you know, go backwards and sort of start that section again. I can just top rope, I can dangle, I can swing around, I can inspect stuff, brush stuff, all that kind of thing. So I think most of the bolts I clip sticked on there on the first go, literally just bop, 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 check stuff out. And then after that, then you can start to, you know, I don't want to take the clip stick up particularly after that. One thing I do take with me a lot, instead of the clip stick, is the, the Kong Panic. I've shown these on the channel before. It's just, you can, hold that and it gives that bit of extra reach really good for on sighting but also really good for red pointing if you're on a hard move you can't quite reach the the quick draw to clip it well that can make life easier that said though i'll often join quick draws together for working a route to make them easier to grab so sport draws tend to be uh have a bigger sort of tape a bigger dog bone on them so they're easier to grab when you're working routes dangling around you'll see people pulling on the carabiner some people on there there's a word of warning i do know someone with a big scar on their hand because they grabbed a quick draw and didn't have the energy left to hold it and their hand slipped and caught on that uh, so not particularly nice so do be careful with doing it but I think most sport climbers probably do I certainly do maybe I favor grabbing that if possible but do that like when you're red pointing stuff there's no style points for red pointing you know it's the final climb that counts that final effort where you tick it that counts the rest of it bring it down to your level use any dirty tactics you can take the clip stick with you if you need it although I'm trying not to do take it with you if you need it the pongoose one is really good because it's, it's handy it's easier to put a rope into an in-situ quick draw so just do that for sure and like I say even for the red point uh, as well link some quick draws together to make it easier to clip where it's easier for you I'm six foot three four so where I clip might be different to where you want to clip from if you're shorter or, you know, slim chance you might be taller, but most people are shorter. So make life easy by bringing those bolts to where you want them. Just because that original bolter put them there doesn't mean that's where it's going to be the best for you. When it comes to the climbing, 
I bring quite a few pairs of shoes to Spain and I want to use like the best tool for the, for the job. So in Margalef, what you see most people wearing are uh, Sportiva solutions. Because of the, um, the toe profile, it's so pointy that you can really uh, get them into um, like pockets that other shoes just can't kind of fit into. Worth their weight in gold, these bad boys. Um, I've got a few pairs of shoes, Sportiva, Evolve ones, EV ones, all sorts, but these are the best shape for me on pockets, which is why that's what you see most people wearing. When you are on those early goes, I've said already, don't waste energy. So if you can't do a particular move, but you want to go higher up, you don't have to do that move, pull past it, use that uh, cheat draw, pull on the quick draws in situ, anything, just get past it and work it. And brush some holes and stuff. It sounds silly, but brush brush the holes. I always carry a brush with me. It just makes them easier to grip. It's quite hot here as well, so it's an extra little bit sweaty. So brush stuff as you go. There's loads of top tips, like I say, for this kind of stuff. So do put them in the comments below. I know I've said it already, but it'd be really good if people were to share those kind of things. Sorry if I look over there. There's loads of people climbing and I get distracted by other people doing stuff. Before I even turn up at the crag, um, so it was a few days ago, I think this is like my fifth session on uh, Transylvania, which is getting into the realms of being too many really for me uh, on this trip, but um, I'm really enjoying it. But the kind of the preparation to make my life easy starts first thing in the morning, every morning for me, coffee, four Weetabix, honey, bit of fruit juice. That's me sort of set for the day. And then on that theme, just make sure you eat and drink loads throughout the day. Um, you know, lots of water. Uh, I'll bring a can of Coke because I kind of like the sugar and caffeine hit. Uh, maybe in the colder weather, that would change to a flask of coffee, nice coffee, something like that. Just a, a little pick me up as I go along. And if it is colder, uh, a hot drink, it's brilliant, isn't it? It just makes you feel so much better um, about life. It's hard work, red pointing projects that aren't in an ideal spot. So I mean, Mike put the drawers in a really good route called Aeroplastica 7C plus like the other side of the valley. It's in the shade, so uh, it's that shady side, the frost hasn't melted in, in weeks in some parts of the road and stuff. So it's just, it's too much hard work to sort of warm up, get sight, especially for that route. It's like a big dynamic move straight off the floor. So pick your projects in sensible places. So while I'm here in Spain, I'm thinking, where's sunny enough, but not too hot. Margalef, it's a bit further north than where I've been in Chile, so it's not too much of a problem. But if it's in the shade, it's genuinely too cold, really, for me to project. It could be, you know, if it's in the UK, for example, where most of my viewers are, but any other country, if it's too far away from home and you can't get there very often, well, it's going to be hard to work and you'll forget moves and stuff like that. So if you have got a project you can't get on very often, do a little map of it, draw out a little sort of topo kind of thing with every move on it, every handhold, every foothold, sequences. Don't be afraid to change sequences because um, sometimes we get sucked in and we're maybe we're doing it in a less efficient way. But make those kind of maps and things of them if you need to. I'm coming here regularly enough, I can remember every move on it. But yeah, eat lots uh, throughout the day and that's going to make your life a lot easier. When I get to the crag, warm up. Put my fingerboard up if I need to, or I just pull on some holds at ground level, do a few uh, power pull-ups. Sometimes I'll do like half a repeater session, use the TheraBand, all these things. I've done a video on that recently, uh, like a full uh, warm up, but uh, do whatever you need to do. And then for me, this is personal. A lot of people will get on an easier route. So perhaps I'm on this 8A, so maybe a lot of people would do a 7A, some really good 7As next to it that I've done already. And that would warm you up. But personally, I tend to get straight onto my project and do some bolt to bolt stuff. So when I got here first thing this morning, warmed up a little bit on some holds or some good two finger pockets to do bits on. And then I got straight on the route, no intention to even go to the top. All I wanted to do is get through the crux to halfway. So I dangled on a few bolts, did a few links, did the crux move, which is an awesome slap. It's um, easy to do in isolation, but much harder to do as a link, uh, which I still haven't done yet um, on, on a link, but hopefully I will do from the floor. Next go, I have one more go today, I think. But just sort of set these targets, there's no point trying to get it first go of the day if it's really hard for you that would just utterly spank me and then that'll ruin the rest of your day if you feel you're getting like flash pumped that have a knock-on effect to the rest of your day for sure so set little goals and be sort of strict with yourself i did tick a project earlier on this trip in chile a 7c plus and i did do that on my warm-up go which breaks every rule I, I set about these things but rules are made for breaking but that route starts off easy to arrest, gets a bit harder to arrest, and then it's like the crux, you can kind of climb into it. 
here in Margalef, things are like steep straight off the floor. So uh, it's, it's harder to do that here. So I wouldn't recommend it here. But um, like I say, you've got to find what works for you. Some of the other tips I got on uh, like Instagram and Facebook were things like um, just I'm going to assume you know how to sort of you know clean a root and stuff like that but little things that some people like I use a quick draw for clipping in other people love like the Petzl connector just which I use for work because they find it makes their life easier whatever makes your life easier this is personal stuff so get a you know a Petzl lanyard is really handy with a, like a self locker on the end so you can adjust it dead quick minimal stress when you're climbing and red pointing, do take either one of those or a quick draw with you, even if the drawers are in situ, because sometimes you just want to fix yourself into uh, into a drawer or something to dangle to give your mate a, a, a breather while they're belaying. And it's also, it makes life a bit easier for stripping and what have you as well. But I think that's a, a good point. Kind of using, I use belay gloves firstly, I'm not sure that makes my life easier, but it does kind of protect my skin a bit, which I know might sound a bit soft, but uh, you can see I've got a little cut there. It's not exactly the world's worst cut, but it does sting and it does make life harder to pull on those pockets. My gloves are fingerless, don't really help with that bit, but if your skin gets trashed, it's harder to climb, so gloves are really useful. But an assisted braking device, so for me, all day long, that's a Petzl Gree Gree. I love it, it works well for me. I'm not saying that other devices are bad, rubbish, less good, but that just works for me. So if you prefer a click up, great, whatever. But sport climbing, use something that's assisted braking because it just makes your life so much easier when your mate is dangling around and stuff like that. Highly recommended. It's not so you can't use an ATC, but just make your life a load easier. Little things like stripping a steep sport route. I'm not going to go into the logistics of it particularly, but little things again, like the pond goose is great because you can take a quick draw out of the rock really easily. So it's easy to leave that first quick draw in, strip the route lower down without taking a massive swing and stuff, and then just reach up and take it out. So the pond goose is great. I'm going to actually buy a longer one when I get home because they were kind enough to give me this one and it's great. But I do like my long beater stick because you can just clip a few uh, on, from the floor. So sometimes I'm not on sighting. Yeah, I'll put the first drawer or two in with a rope in, depending on where I am. But sometimes it's nice to put the third, the fourth in without the ropes, just quicker to clip. Like I say, little things that make your life a bit easier. I think that's probably most of my tips. Uh, I'm sure I've missed loads of good ones. Lots of little tips are things like bringing flip-flops to the crag to make sure you know you just have a nicer time and sunscreen and all these little things that just you know, make life a, a bit of a, a nicer event. And I find when I'm happy, I climb better, which is partly why I like climbing when it's warm, but not too warm. One of the top tips I should say that a lot of people recommended on Instagram and Facebook was climb with someone better than you. And it was a bit tongue in cheek, I suppose, those comments, but it's partly true. Sometimes it's good because they can put the drawers in stuff for you. So for example, that 7B kind of grade, uh, sometimes I on site 7B, sometimes I don't. But it's a lot easier with the drawers in. So I'm climbing with uh, Diana and she, she loves going first. So I'm happy with that. She'll put the drawers in, then I can have a good go at flashing it. If I don't, I don't, but you know, it makes life a bit easier. Uh, it's just an easier way of getting drawers into things, isn't it? Or stripping it at the end of the day, your mate might have a go last and, and take the drawers out. But climbing with people better than you is a good way to progress your climbing because they push you differently. You know, the drawers happen to be in harder stuff, so you can just try it. I'm going to Santa Linea for the month after this uh, month in Mark Leff, and there all the drawers are in situ. That's great. You can just have a go at anything well beyond your pay grade. If you can do it and the moves and stuff, great. If you can't, well, you just clip the next drawer lower down. There's no faff of stripping and all that kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a great way to climb. And I th I'm sure that's one of the reasons why a lot of um, European climbers are, are better at sport climbing because they can just go and have fun more easily. They don't have many places in situ drawers at home. Put in those comments below what I've missed because there'll be loads of good top tips for making life easier, I'm sure. But hopefully it's just fueled a bit of thought. Make your life easy. No one cares about the style of pre-red point effort. Just get up it, learn the moves as best you can. Try and remember them. Try your best to remember them and then sort of put them into practice and breathe well, rest well, all those kind of things. That's a good one. Sleep well the night before. That's super important, isn't it? But like I say, please do put your top tips in the comments below. But hopefully it's been a little bit thought provoking and it's got to, you know, got to see some sunshine in a cool place. The Margalef is awesome. If you haven't been, get here. But if you haven't been, it's worth training pockets before you come. Last year when I got here, I got absolutely spanked because I was rubbish on like two finger pockets. I'm still pretty rubbish. I'm just a little bit less rubbish and I trust them more. So it does make life loads easier again. So maybe pre training specifically for certain types can be really useful. 
fire away with questions in those comments below as always happy to answer as best I can I know I say it every time and click that like button smash the subscribe button first video of 2022 I think being a bit slack sorry about that hope you've enjoyed this video though more videos coming up very soon <laughs>